Hey, what's up, Amnesia Cole? And with 2021 over, I figured now would be the perfect time to talk about some of my favorite games. But not just my favorite games from 2021, but my favorite game from each year for the past decade. This was a really tough list to make, especially for some years more than others. So let's get right into it. Coming in at 2011, we have Minecraft. I don't think any other game that came out in 2011 was as impactful as Minecraft. I mean, it's the most sold game of all time. It sold almost 240 million copies. And in my opinion, it's the most impactful game of all time. It's endlessly fun and there's no real end to the game. Like obviously, yeah, you can kill the inner dragon, you can kill the wither, but to be honest, in the past seven years of playing Minecraft, I've never once killed the Ender Dragon. And that's because I play Minecraft just to build, just to build cool stuff in cities and buildings and stuff like that. Obviously, you can beat the game, but that's just never really been my thing. Coming in at 2012, we have Black Ops 2. Now, I was not very good at Black Ops 2, hence the gameplay that you're watching right now. Uh, but I played lots of it on 360 and me and my friends would just get on every day after school and mess around and troll people and it was fun. Black Ops 2 was the first Call of Duty game I ever played and I just have a lot of really, really good memories on this game. In 2013, we have Tomb Raider. Now, this game was so much more than I expected when I first downloaded it. First of all, the island that the game takes place in was just so big. Like, I can just remember me saying, like, surely the game is going to be over soon, right? But it just kept going. And honestly, I like that. A lot of people don't like super long games, but that's my thing. Like, give me more content and I will just play it for however long the game is. Now don't just put a bunch of filler content in there, but actually have something that has value and is fun to play, and I will just play it for 500, 600, 700 thousand hours. I don't remember much of the story, but I just remember it was really fun. And another thing about Tomb Raider and the whole Tomb Raider series is the story is very convoluted, but that's not something that matters too much to me because it's very gameplay oriented. There's a big focus on the gameplay, making the controls feel right, all of the parkour scenes, and it's just a genuinely fun game to play. It's one of those games where I can just pick up, I don't need to know the story, but I can just start playing. Now 2014, if you've been a fan of this channel for a while, you'll probably know my answer to this and that is Watch Dogs. 100% Watch Dogs is my favorite and honestly, in my opinion, the best game to come out in 2014. I have so many hours between Steam and Epic and Xbox, I can't even count at this point. I've beaten the game so many times and it's like pretty much since 2017 when I got the game originally, there hasn't been a week of me not playing Watch Dogs. This game really does a good job of making you feel like Batman, like you're this vigilante and you're going around the streets. I love the storyline, especially when I first played it. If there was any game that I could repeat or I could forget everything about and start from the beginning, it would 100% be this game. It's just so cool. All of the cars, all of the music, the radio songs, the missions, the voice acting, everything is just perfection in my opinion. And of course, you got to talk about the modding scene. There's been a lot of mods for Watch Dogs which I've talked about plenty of times on the channel. So yeah, for all those reasons, that is why Watch Dogs is my favorite game from 2014. Coming in at 2015, we have Life is Strange. Now I've actually made a few videos about Life is Strange, not as many as I have for Watch Dogs, but I've talked about this countless times on my channel. But Life is Strange is one of those games where I can really lose myself in. Everything from the lighting, the graphics, the sound design, the voice acting, the entire world and atmosphere of this game just sucks me in and I can forget about anything else going on in the world. I'm no longer me. I'm Max Caulfield. I'm going to a photography school in the Pacific Northwest and I just met my childhood best friend and I got superpowers. That's what I feel like when I play this game. And you think like a very narrative focused game like Life is Strange would only have so many times that you can replay it, but no, I can still replay it over and over again and that's what I thought for a while until last year I replayed it again for probably like the fifth time and it still hit me the same way as it did when I played it the first time and there are very few games that can pull that off. Mm -hmm. 
Coming in at 2016, we have Watch Dogs 2. This is one of my favorite games of all time. I have put countless hours in it, and the atmosphere of this game is unreal. I feel like the theme is almost stronger than the first game in this one. Everything feels like San Francisco. I talked about this briefly in my top 10 gaming worlds that I uploaded like three years ago, but it makes me feel like I'm in a place that I've never been before. I've never been to San Francisco. The atmosphere that Watch Dogs 2 creates is just unmatched. In 2017, my favorite game was Life is Strange Before the Storm. Now, this was the first Life is Strange game that I was there for release because I played Life is Strange, the original game, uh, about a year after the last episode came out, so I was already waiting for Life is Strange Before the Storm, and I actually didn't enjoy it that much when it first came out. But then a few years later, I replayed it, and now it's like my second favorite, well, third favorite Life is Strange game. I forgot about True Colors, but yeah, it has a great soundtrack. It's really cool to be able to see what Chloe was like before the first game and to be able to see all of the events that led up to the first game. It's really cool seeing Chloe dye her hair at the end of this game. So it's like at the beginning of the first game, we see Chloe's hair is already blue. That was one of the things that I saw in Life is Strange where I was like, I wonder what made her like this like how what made her be the type of person that she is right now and you get to see that all throughout life is strange before the storm coming at 2018 we have just cause 4 now believe it or not just cause 4 is my most played game on steam i have about i think 800 something hours in just cause 4 because it is just so easy almost too easy to spend an entire day in this game um, when I first got it, I actually reviewed it pretty negatively because quite frankly, the performance was horrible. But like a lot of these games, I, I picked it up a few months later. It was fine. And I went through the story. The story was, I mean, it was all right for a Just Cause game. It wasn't anything special. I especially loved the theme of all the natural disasters between the sandstorm and the snowstorm and the tornado. I think those were really cool. The tornado is one of my favorite parts and one of the things I was like really hyped for and they definitely delivered as far as that goes. Even after you beat the game, I beat the game twice, but I haven't really gone back to the story since then. I just like messing around. I love driving around Solis. I love flying around Solis. I especially love the Invisijet. That's like my favorite part of Just Cause 4. The Invisijet is, it's just so cool and the like the wings can fold up and it's just like one of the coolest things ever. Explosions feel even better and look even better, sound even better than Just Cause 3. The wingsuit is more refined and honestly, the jet wingsuit, the jet part of the wingsuit was one of the best ideas for the Just Cause series that they could have ever thought of. It's just so fun. And this is one, one video game that I can describe as just pure fun. I can just jump in and have fun. It doesn't matter what else is going on and that's what I love it for. At 2019, we actually have a game that I have never talked about on the channel and I've been wanting to because it is very quickly, since I bought it earlier this year, very quickly jumped into my top 10 games of all time. Now this is a masterpiece of a game. Now I will not talk about any story spoilers. I'll really talk about it really vaguely because this is a game that is best experienced when you know nothing about it. You just go into it blind and you figure it out yourself. That is honestly the best way that you can play this game. It is a 10 out of 10 game. The only thing that I will say about it is that it is a narrative space game with highly stylized graphics. I played probably the first 50 hours of this game without even touching the story because flying the ship was so fun. I would just fly the ship, experiment, see what I could do, and it was just such a fun experience. It still is a fun experience, but that's before I even got into the story. The soundtrack is absolutely amazing. Seriously, one of the best gaming soundtracks I've ever heard. And they accomplished so much in this game with no dialogue whatsoever. It's insane what Anapira was able to do with this game. And this game, I believe, was originally a student project back in like 2012 or something like that. And they just kept working on the game. They got a publisher and they perfected it to the state that it is now. And they also just released a DLC for the game not that long ago. I believe it was about two months ago in October. If there's any game that I would recommend over any of these other games, it would be Outer Wilds. If you haven't played it, go play Outer Wilds. Not Outer Worlds, Outer Wilds, because they both came out around the same time and they have similar names, but Outer Wilds. I'll also put a link in the description if you wanna go check that out. For me, Outer Wilds is the best game to have come out in 2019, and I think a lot of people would agree with me on that.
Coming in at 2020, we have Watch Dogs Legion. Now, probably a lot of people would not agree with me, but I would say this for multiple reasons. One, I don't actually play that many games in the same year that they're released. Like I can check right now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games from 2021. And I have somewhere close to around 30 games from 2016. So that should tell you something about me. I play a lot of older games um, for a few reasons, just because they go on sale and I, you know, it takes me a long time to get onto the idea of buying a game. So I just, you know, I'll wait for Steam sales and stuff like that. But back to Watch Dogs Legion, um, it was borderline unplayable at launch due to performance issues. It made the experience really unenjoyable. Recent updates have definitely made it worth it. First of all, the performance issues are pretty much gone for me. Obviously that's not the case for everyone, but I don't get any stutters anymore and that was the one thing that was honestly like giving me motion sickness because it was very hitchy it wasn't like a consistent frame rate because I can handle low frame rates that are like 30 FPS but when it's like jumping all over the place like 30 40 60 20 it's just it's too much before bloodline if I had played any more games in 2020 this wouldn't be on the list but bloodline definitely made it worth it bloodline was one of the best things to happen to watchdogs since Watch Dogs 2, and it was just such a good expansion. Honestly, better than the original story, in my opinion. I like the concept of play as anyone. One of the main critiques of this game is the play as anyone system doesn't give people any character development. You know, it's all generated by an algorithm, and there's no like, you know, there's traits and stuff like that that you can read. There's like pre generated traits, but there's nothing that like makes you love a character. But it's kind of the opposite for me because I like to give my NPCs or PCs their own storylines. Like in my head, I like thinking of their own storylines, but obviously I know that's not for everyone. I don't want it to happen in the next game. I've talked about this in a few different videos. I would like maybe a rotating character section between a few characters. So maybe like four or five characters so you can have much better character development and they could all have their own abilities and gadgets and powers and stuff like that so i think that'd be really cool but yeah i think Watch Dogs legion needed to happen but i don't think it needs to happen again i really enjoyed it but i think they can lay off of it for Watch Dogs 4. and now we are at 2021 and you probably could have guessed this but it's life is strange true colors Life is Strange True Colors is now in my top 10 games, which is getting pretty crowded. Like there are like 30 games in my top 10, but Life is Strange True Colors, I talked about it in the review that I uploaded a few months ago, but it is just, honestly, in my opinion, it dethroned Life is Strange 1. Like where do I even start? The sound design, the graphics, the technical, uh, like the, the motion capture, the voice acting, the story, everything about this game is 10 out of 10 it is 100% one of my favorite games to come out in recent times and even if I played every game that came out this year this would still be my favorite game it's the same with life is strange one I can just lose myself in the characters and the story and I'm no longer myself I'm no longer Nizio Cole I become Alex Chen and it is just such an amazing experience deck nine did an amazing job on the game and when they talked about the motion capture being so important for the emotion in the game i thought they were bluffing i thought oh well, they're just saying that you know to like hype up the game but it was really truly and honestly one of the best things they could have done for this game the facial expressions were much more expressive in this game than previous games and they just killed it they knocked it out of the park with this game and I have a feeling that I'm going to be replaying this for quite a while. So yeah, that was my pick for 2021. Let me know what your favorite game for every year from the past decade was in the comment section below. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace.